Hello again and welcome to another Modern Mondays. This is episode 74 and I have a huge exciting announcement to make. I've hinted at it, I've mentioned it in passing in a few videos, but now we're doing a proper reveal session guys. I am going to be announcing, I am announcing the building, the construction, the forthcoming, the soon to be Mordian Glory Battle Bunker. A dedicated Warhammer 40k battle report studio that I am going to be doing for this channel. Uh, so no longer will the battle reports be filmed on the dining room table, in the flat, with the sofa in the background, the ironing board in one corner. That's going to be gone guys. We're taking this channel to the next level. It's going to be a dedicated space. It's going to be themed. It's going to be half sort of YouTube studio theme, half battle bunker theme, and it's going to be awesome. And before we go any further, I want to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters because this entire project is being funded by my Patreon supporters. For those of you that don't know, I do have a Patreon page and all the money gets reinvested back into the channel. Now, normally, uh, when, under normal operations, a lot of the Patreon money goes towards things like software or new terrain, for the battle reports, and also for going to events, so hotels and event tickets and stuff like that. And that's what I normally spend it on. But over the last sort of six months of lockdown, there's been no events to go to and no battle reports that I can do. I mean, it's been crazy. So I've let the money build up and I thought, what can I do with it? I don't just want it sitting there doing nothing. I want to invest it. And I thought, you know what? Let's turn one of the rooms into the new house, into a dedicated studio. And my patrons deserve a huge, huge thank you. I'm going to say it, massive thank you to you guys. Because honestly, this project, I can never afford to do it without your extremely generous and very welcome support. So, you guys are legendary. I know I don't make a big enough deal out of my Patreon supporters, and that's something I'm trying to work on. But you guys truly are legendary, and hopefully, you will be as excited uh, as me about this project. You can see where your money goes to. I try and be as transparent about this as possible, and I'm going to do loads of exciting posts about this YouTube studio, but I want to show you where I'm up to so far. So massive thank you to the Patreon supporters. That's a big enough introduction. I'm going to show you where I've got up to because a lot of progress has happened on this over the last few weeks. So without further ado, let's get into this video. I'm going to show you some pictures of where we've got up to with the battle bunker. So the first thing that I did is I had to pick a colour. Okay, I had to pick a colour and I agonised over this for, for too long, weeks and weeks. So any of you that know me, maybe you don't know me, I, one thing I want to give you is a sort of peek inside my brain is I plan things, I plan things, I think things, I literally eliminate every option until I've decided what I want to do. When I was building my gaming PC, it took me six months to pick the parts. I knew what I wanted, but I had to do my research. And this idea has been forming in my brain for a long time. And so it took me a long time to decide what color do I want to go for? Do I go for white? Lovely, brilliant white catches the light, makes the recording area really good. Problem I had with white is that it shows up dirt and smudges and problems on the walls really easily. And the room, I don't, you know, people scratch the wall, you can see it straight away. So, and I also thought it was a bit boring. So what's better than white? I didn't want to go anything too dark or too garish or anything like that. So I thought, what about a light grey? Almost like a, a concrete grey. Why don't we have this as a, as a concrete command bunker? And that's where the idea came from. It's almost like a steely grey colour. And so I had a couple of choices. And so you can see here this first picture, I was doing some tester tests on the wall. Um, and the one on the left was a bit too dark. So I went for the one on the right. And I've done the whole room in that colour. It looks absolutely fantastic. So... If, you're ever, if anyone else is thinking about doing this, make sure you pick the right colour. And don't be afraid to do a couple of tests. It took me a long time to pick which colour I wanted to go for. I almost went for like a deep Mordian blue, but that would have been too dark. I've gone for that in, in a different area. So the curtains are that deep Mordian blue. So I've got that sort of theme there. But yeah, so first step was picking the colour. And I went for uh, a grey. And it's, I think it's Dulux and it's called Chic Shadow. So if anyone wants to know what the colour is, it's called Chic Shadow. And I think it's a really nice light grey. So that's the first thing that we... Now once I was happy with the colour, I started doing the whole room in it. So I hopefully I had to do all the masking tape and all that kind of stuff. And I started painting it all over the whole room. And you can see here, uh, I wanted this picture, to put this picture in, so I wanted to show the difference in colours. What the, orig the, the original colour is uh, sort of a light magnolia, and this is the new Chic Shadow colour. I wanted to do a, a sort of before and after to really give you an idea of the difference between the two because if I just showed you the finished room you might not sort of understand how different the colors were so started painting away did a bit of a uh, window a bit of a wall and uh, sort of took a picture you can see the difference between the two colors you can see it is a very 
It's a very strong grey, but it's not too dark. In fact, it's still drying a little bit here when I'm taking this picture, and it, it lightened up a lot after it was after it had dried. And here you can see the room after we've done two thick coats. So you can see it's a really nice, smooth grey colour that goes across the, all the walls. And it's really, I really like it. It's just. It's just permanent enough that looks a bit like, you know, nice light grey concrete, but without looking like I've got a room that looks like bare concrete walls. I thought it, it, it turned out really nicely. But the problem is that you can have the nicest coloured room in the world, you can have all the best terrain and all that kind of stuff, but lighting is key. And one of the big problems I've had in nearly all my battle reports, especially all the ones that have been done in the flat, is the lighting was terrible absolutely terrible it's just been a single crappy light bulb and it's fine in the daytime when you get a bit of daylight through but then the daylight starts glaring and, and it's been a dark room so in the flat i had a really big problem with lighting i did manage to get a couple of big lamps that i could hang on the edge of the of the table just what it was very amateurish it was very much a stop gap and i never could i could never have quite enough lights so as you can see in this picture the walls look really good but the light is a bit poor and so the next thing i want to do was to upgrade the lighting system so i'm going to show you a picture of what i went for and this is the industrial size lighting system that i went for so i went for i believe they're called spotlights i considered ceiling lights which are ones that would be recessed into the ceiling but quite frankly the sort of cost benefit analysis of those wasn't worth it. I would have had to get an electrician in. It would have taken a lot of time. It's, you know, a lot of work been very busy at the moment. People, a lot of people in the UK in this lockdown are getting renovations done on their home. I'm not the only one uh, doing this. So I thought that's going to take a lot of time. It's going to take a lot of work. It's going to create a lot of mess. I've just redecorated the whole bloody place. I should have thought about this. So what I decided to go for was spotlights rather than ceiling lights. I believe I'm getting the right terminology there. Uh, I am not a lighting expert. But what I wanted was just as many lights as I could get on one of these ceiling light bars as possible. And I saw a lot that was sort of four, and I thought that won't be enough when you're thinking of a big Warhammer table. And I want this to try and light as much of the room as possible. So I went for, a, this is from B&Q, and it's a, re, it's a really big six, uh, sort of six bulb ceiling light thing. And it's really, really good. It's really good. I'm showing you a couple of pictures, you can see it at a couple of different angles here, but it's, it's really good. It's not turned on at the moment, obviously. But what's really cool is the, you can see the bulbs are frosted on the end. So the LEDs are in there and then the bulbs are frosted on the tips. And that's really effective at scattering the light evenly over the room uh, across the whole table. So it does mean that sort of above head height, there's not as much light. You can see where, you know, where they're hanging down. But on the table itself, it spreads the light out really, really nicely. And so I'm gonna show you now a, a sort of picture of what they look like on. So here you can see the lights on and you can see that it's really nice, bright LEDs, but the, the sharpness of the LEDs is sort of, it's sort of uh, broken up by the, that sort of, sort of frosted bulbs. They're really, really good. And I'm actually going to show you a picture now of what, obviously when you point the camera at the lights, it can, um, it can sort of make the camera focus on the lights and make the rest of the room look dark. But I'm going to throw up a picture now that shows how much lighter the room looks. If you remember, if you look back at that old, uh, the previous picture where it was the room with the single light bulb and then compared to this next one that's coming up you'll see that the lighting is even on my crappy camera phone is significantly improved by this proper lighting system so what i've got is the before picture so you can see this is with the light on bear in mind and then this next picture is with the new lighting system in now this it's interesting, my, ca my terrible camera phone doesn't pick everything up, but this, honestly, the difference between the previous light and this light is immeasurable. And now, you, the, uh, I will admit, sort of above where the lights are isn't particularly well lit, but down on the table, it is so well lit. I just, I cannot wait to start filming battle reports because it's going to be really good. There's not, a, a not even with the LEDs, there's not much glare because of those frosted light bulbs. It's going to look so good and I can't wait to start filming battle reports uh, on the table. Um, and it's just, I'm so excited and it seems so silly to get excited over like a lighting system. But honestly, it just, it, it's going to make, I'm really hoping it's going to make the channel look a bit more professional. You know, we're closing in on those 10K subs. I never thought I'd get above a thousand subs. The fact that we're closing in on 10K subs is is mega. And I know we're not as big as like Tabletop Tactics. I say we because I'm talking about the guard community, but like, I know the channel's not as big as like Tabletop Tactics or Winners SEO or Tabletop Tactics who have, you know, blown up and done so well in a short amount of time. You know, admittedly, a little jealous, which, <laughs> but you know, no, not really, man. But, um, 
Um, I'm personally very pleased with closing in on those 10k subs and I'm seeing a lot of momentum growing around the channel and I, th I just really want to be able to start showing off more battle reports and not ones that are filmed on my little sort of <laughs> crappy camera with or on my phone uh, with a, in, in a living room with a single a single light bulb I don't I'm moving away from that and I'm just really this light is just um, it's a big step forward and it's not the only lighting we're going to have in the room. This is the lighting that's just for the table. So if you're a little worried like, oh, morning glory looks a bit, mm, looks a little bit dark on that far wall. Don't worry, Kimasabi. I'm on it. I get it. Don't worry. There is going to be separate light. Where that far wall that you see there, that is where the display cabinets are going to go. And each one of those display cabinets is going to have its own lighting system. And there's going to be a lot of light at that end of the room and at the other end of the room as well. So this light system I've got is very good at getting light onto the table and I'm totally okay with it not getting light on the uh, on the two far walls because they are going to have their own lighting. That's what's going to go there. So it's going to be really, really, really good. You, the, the display cases I've gone for, if you're interested, are actually the Billy slash Oxberg, they're called Billy slash Oxberg display, uh, bookcases. Bookcases I know are a bit weird, but they're glass fronted. And they've got solid shelves, so which means I can put a light underneath each shelf. So each shelf will have its own light. So each the armies that are on each shelf will be have their own individual perfect lighting system. So they're going to be really, really bright, really well displayed. I was looking at going for the classic IKEA Detolf um, display case. You cannot find them for love nor money in the UK at the moment. I think I don't think they've got any in stock in IKEA in the whole of the UK, which is mad. Now the bookcases I'm buying, these Billy Oxberg ones, um, they're glass fronted still, uh, so still plenty of visibility on the uh, on the old models, and um, they're still going to take until late April to arrive. So they're going to arrive at the end of April, uh, but I'll get into that later. What, what's the next steps? But for now, you can just understand the light for the table. You can see the difference, and there's going to be more lighting at each end of the room. So don't worry if it looks a little bit dark. It's still a massive improvement. Uh, so let's move on to the next bit now that I've been working on. Now, once we had the painting done and the light system done, now we've started getting into sort of the fine, the sort of smaller fine details, things that is not, that look good and that shouldn't really draw attention to themselves, but are sort of background details. And one of the main ones that we did is I changed all the light switches and plug sockets and everything in the whole place. And the original ones that I had on there were the ones that are on the left that are in my hand in this picture. Those sort of basic white ones. Now, they were fine and they were okay, but between the decorating that I had done and the decorating that the sellers of the house had done before we moved in to you know, spruce it up a bit, there was a lot of paint going on. And they were a bit battered and a bit knackered anyway. And I thought, look, let, we, let's, let's do this properly. If we're going to do it, every detail that's, needs to be taken into account. And there's no point in having a great paint system and a great light system if all it's going to do is highlight you've got crappy white plugs and plug sockets and everything. And I wanted it, again, it's part of this battle bunker theme. I wanted, like brushed metal now what i went for in the end is i didn't go for brushed steel i went for brushed nickel steel slightly different it's just a bit darker uh, and i just thought it looked good a bit more con you know sort of stood out on the walls a little bit more a little bit of a background detail now the plan is this isn't done yet the plan is i've got a friend who is an artiste, <laughs> no, an artist. And what I want to do with these plug sockets, uh, not uh, well, plug sockets and this light switch, is I want to put some text above it or around it. That says something like, you know, praise, may, may the emperor uh, give us his light or some, some sort of in, like in, in sort of italics, like gothic lettering, like some sort of imperial platitude above the light, like, you know, Praise the machine spirit for turning the light on and all that kind of thing. And I just want to have a bit of theme. This is where the theme is going to come in. And a little bit of that is, is going to be, I plan on having a little bit of text above like the light switches and the light sockets. Some of it you, you won't see, but you will see it with the light switch, of course. And sort of above the door, uh, I want to have something that says, you know, mine, you know, leaving the battle bunker or mess, you know, mess hall on the left or something like that. Some, just a little bit of text around the room that's going to be, that's going to show off. Uh, and be a bit more imperial and give that sort of, that sort of theming battle bunker vibe because at the moment it's very studio like and I want it to be fifty percent studio fifty percent battle bunker or what more what more than likely is going to happen it's going to be sort of seventy five percent studio with a little twenty five percent seasoning of making it like an imperial command bunker because at the end of the day 
It's not a theme. It's not a, it's not an Imperial Battle Bunker. And I want it to be an awesome YouTube studio that has a bit of a theme with the Battle Bunker. I don't if I had if I was originally planning on having like Laz pistols on the walls and stuff like that, but when I actually started planning out the space that I had for storage and everything, I had to turn it down a little bit, which is a shame. But um, I'm still hoping to get a, to get like a loud pistol in the corner or something like that. It's like an ornament. I've still got plans. Um, but this is where the theming is going to come into. This is where the battle bunker is going to come into. We've got the grey walls. We've got the metallic industrial light switches. We're going to have... Um, well, I'll talk about that later with what's coming next. But there's going to be lots of little details that are going to make it a bit like an imperial bunker. So the last bit of progress to update you guys on is that I have put together the first bit of furniture for the room and it's these two console tables i didn't even know what a console table was until i had to put two of them together now i got these from uh, argos if you're in the uk you'll be familiar with argos and they're actually pretty reasonably priced uh, and the reason i put these two together is this is the wall that you haven't seen yet so i've been taking all the photographs from and the door is on the left hand side and swings out now what I wanted, and I actually got this idea from um, when I had my battle report with Winters SEO, and he has a dedicated area that he puts his books um, and before the battle where he records the armies. And I thought that's such a good idea because one of the biggest problems that I've had in the past when I've been doing this in the living room is I've had to put the armies out and then move the armies to sort of one side to then put the terrain out or I get the terrain out perfectly then go, oh, but yeah, I haven't recorded the armies yet. So then I have to move the terrain around a bit and it all looks, it's just a bit cramped trying to do everything on one table. So what I thought is get a couple of these bad boys together. And what it lets me do is set the armies out uh, before the battle so I can record each list. Because one of the things that um, I've been you know, doing trying to take the Morning Glory Channel to the next level is look at how other YouTubers do things. And I think... Recording the army first is really, really good. In fact, one of the things that I miss about the Tabletop Tactics Battle Reports is they don't show the army list now. They just talk through the army list, which is fine. They've gotten down the description, but I think it's really nice having the armies on display as you're talking through them. And so that's what I want to do here. So I'm going to have the armies on display. And what it also means is because I've got this dedicated area now, I can have the tripod set up with the camera on the tripod. And I can actually have the tripod zoomed in on one army, go through the list, and then I can have it zoomed in on the other army, go through the list, and it's less shaky cam. It's much more stable, it's much more clean, it's much more professional. And that's what I want this area for. Uh, now, they are, like I said, they are a little small. So if I was doing something like a pure infantry army, more than likely I'd have to spread out across both tables. But for any normal army, like a hybrid guard army, or Black Templars, or GSD Occult, um, or if I've got, you know, uh, other people coming and playing like uh, Dark Elder or Tau or Blood Angels and stuff like that, then very much I can have both armies, one on one table, one on the other table, and there's plenty of room. It's only for that uh, scenario when I'm using pure infantry, where I might need to spread out across two tables. But, you know, it's fine. It's a good area. And what's really good about it is when models die, you know, what I've had in previous battle reports, if I've just had to push models into corners, I had dead piles on the table but just in places where the table's not being used and it just looks terrible. So what I have now is a dedicated area where I can have codexes set up, easier to check rules when you've got your codex out and ready to rock and roll. And it's easier for transferring models that have died from the table to the, I guess I call it the pre-battle area or the, the assembly square, whatever you want to call it, and they can, it can go there. Now, above this, and I haven't got this pictured yet, and this is one of the things that will be coming later, but a, what I'm going to have above this is I'm going to have um, something really cool, actually. But there's going to be additional lighting uh, that's going to be above this that will shine down on the army. So, that so again, this is where the lighting is going to come from. So on the other wall, the one further away from the door, we'll have the, the, the display cases, which will have lighting in them. So there'll be plenty of lighting there. And then on this side, there's going to be a couple of um, lights that are going to come out from the wall and going to shine down. Probably get either one big one or two small ones, but one for each table, basically. And that's going to look really, really cool. Um, also, as you can see, under, I've, I've got these ones specifically because they have got a easy access to underneath them. Now, the reason that's important is I need as much storage as possible. In fact, 
There's going to be a lot of storage that's going to be underneath here, and they're called really useful storage boxes, so I'm going to get a boatload of them. And I'm also going to have loads of those that go underneath the table. You see, what I've dealt with for the longest time, when I was in the living room, I just shoved like terrain into cupboards. Uh, and, but when I've been in the, when I've had everything, everything in the, the Warhammer room so far, it's just been in crappy cardboard boxes that's still been there from when we've moved. And it's just not good. It's, you know, different sizes, all this kind of thing. It doesn't quite work. So what I'm going to get, I'm going to invest a significant amount of money uh, into getting proper storage. So all the armies will be stored in the display cases and all the terrain and everything else and projects that I'm currently working on will be stored in really useful storage boxes and in um, new carry cases. I'm going to get new carry cases for each army because I've got some really... I've got some old battered ones, but I've got a new one from Tabletop Tyrant that's really, really good that I use for more 50 rifles, and I want to get more of them. Now, one other thing I want to mention before we move on to the next day, because there is actually one more, uh, I almost forgot one more bit that I've done in the room. Um, I can't decide yet at the moment, it's something I'm thinking about, but I'm thinking of resurfacing those these two console tables this for, for the assembly area. I'm thinking of, because at the moment they look pretty good, but they've just got this sort of basic wood finish, which is fine. But what I'm thinking of doing is actually recovering them somehow. Uh, and I'm going to use battle map material, like the neo, the big neoprene mouse mat stuff. You see, some of the terrain that I, I've invested in that I'm looking forward to sharing with you guys uh, over the next couple of weeks is uh, it comes with... Uh, like a little two by two battle mat. Now I'm never going to use that two by two battle mat, but I could definitely consider like cutting it up or reshaping it and, re and using it to essentially reupholster those two um, those two tables so that they would look a bit cool, a bit more themed rather than the bare wood. Haven't decided yet. Might just stick with the bare wood. Not sure, but I think it might look pretty good. So that's a, a, a maybe at the moment. We'll see how it's more. It's a nice to have for sure. Now, um, yeah, one last thing to show uh, to share with you that I've done so far, and then we'll get into what's planned for the next stage. This is stage one, and there's going to be a stage two. But what? Let's just go to the last bit first. So the last thing I did this weekend is I mounted a sword on the wall because I thought it would look really, really cool. So this is actually on that little bit of space that's between the two windows. Uh, I really wasn't sure what to put there. There was some artwork that I was considering putting there, but I had a different plan for that. Um, and I just wasn't sure what to do with that space, but I knew I wanted something there. And I also wanted, I also realized I was, I'd gone a little bit, I mentioned this before, I was going a little bit too far away from the Battle Bunker vibe. And I thought, look, this is definitely a YouTube studio and we want it to look professional. But we also want a certain atmosphere. And I talked about, you know, mounting a weapon on the wall. I considered doing like a las gun or something like that, but it didn't quite work. And then I realized, hang on, I've already got the perfect thing for this. You see, for a Christmas, a Christmas to myself one year, I bought, well, actually it wasn't to the whole family. I bought every member of my family um, a sword. So, so my dad got a, uh, a Gladius, every male member of the family I should say, my dad got a Gladius and my brother got like a really cool Dragon Slayer sword and I got a bit of a generic just long sword. I didn't actually realise at the time but it's, it's actually says King Arthur on it and Excalibur which I thought was a bit cheesy but you know nothing wrong with having a bit of home pride I suppose. Um, but what I wanted to do is I wanted, I've never really had any use for this thing, it's just been a display, it's just been in the way, it's just been in the corner of the flat here and there, you know the missus absolutely hates it and I just thought you know what let's actually do something with this thing that will fit the theme of the room and will look really cool. So I've actually mounted this on the wall and what I'm essentially going to say is like, look, this is the battle bunker. This is the command bunker of the Mordian 50th Rifles. This is our heirloom regimental power sword. And I almost want to say uh, sort of like a bit of regimental fluff that I'm going to build in based purely on me having this old sort of sword and finally have finding a purpose for it. I want to say... That little bit of fluff is it's got a it's gonna look really cool on the wall it looks it definitely brings that battle bunker vibe back you know having a, a an heirloom sword on the wall looks great um i'm gonna need, it needs a bit of a polish to be fair but finally finally make get some use out of something that i bought but in terms of actually translating this is a really cool little link into the fluff of the regiment i'm gonna say that when the morning 50th rifles were reforged when they were you know when they were almost put on their pentacle save and they changed their uniform as a, as a symbol of them, 
casting off their old, maybe slightly dodgy her heretical ways, like using psychers and stuff like that, as a way of casting that off and cementing their absolutely religious fanaticism to the Imperial Creed and the fact that they love getting into melee range, that this is actually going to be the relic power sword that was gifted to the regiment upon their refounding. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to link that in game. And when I go into, uh, when I'm having these sort of like narrative battle reports or whatever, I'm going to take a commander or Lord Commissar and I'm going to spend my relic on the Blade of Conquest. And so that, the Blade of Conquest, it won't be the Blade of Conquest from, you know, Lord Sol Macarius' sword, but it will represent that this is the most treasured heirloom in the regiment. And when the com and the commander of the regiment on the battlefield must always have the Blade of New... We'll, we'll come up with a name for it. In fact, if you've got any suggestions for a name, like a cool name, like the Blade of New Mordia or Fobane or anything like that, I don't mind, whatever, like a cool... 40k Mordian name would be for this web for this blade. I will I'll, if I I'll, if you put it down in the comments, I will pick it, and that will be the that will be a subscriber suggested name for the regiment heirloom of the Mordian 50th rifles. So that's the, I, not only have I found a use for it, almost like recycled this thing, but I'm actually going to link it into the fluff of the regiment. So it'll really make the theme of the room come together. And having a weapon on the wall is nothing more cool than having a sword mounted on the wall. It's just really, really badass. And it definitely turns it from a 100% YouTube studio in a nice clean room. And it definitely brings it back to that middle ground and makes it very much a war room with weapons on the walls and stuff like that i'm thinking of somehow like having a, a pistol like mounted on on like a display piece on the windowsill like having a las pistol or something i don't know i haven't quite worked out yet but yeah there's definitely i'm definitely gonna i definitely want to add a little bit more battle bunker back in and this definitely does it in a big way so that's the last thing put together the last thing that i've done over the weekend um what's the next stage what is stage two of the battle bunker because we're, we're only halfway at this point and i'm really excited to share with you my plans for what's going to come next so i thought for this last part of the video i would throw up a picture of commissar cat kylo being a cute bastard she's such a little fuzzball but i thought you know you can have a little bit have a cat tax you know have a little cat tax um so i thought you know whilst i talk about the the next stage for the Battle Bunker, you can look at the little fuzzball that commands the Mordia 50th Rifles. That's the Lord Commissar of the Regiment. Um, so, yeah, so you can see big progress made so far. It's all starting to come together. But what are the next, what's the next step? Well, I've mentioned some of it in passing. The next thing that I need to do is get the display cases done. Now, originally I was going to go for some of the death of ones, but like I said, couldn't find those for love nor money. Uh, but they're the next thing, and they're going to be arriving at the end of this month, maybe beginning of next month. So I need to get them, put them all together, and get the armies in there ready for the display, ready in the display case. So that's really cool. So that's step one. That's pretty easy. Um, the next step is, and what I'm really excited about, is also, is I'm going to get some artwork for the walls. Now I have a um, already got one piece of artwork, which is a which was done, which is which is a really nice gift from the Warhammer Club that I'm part of, the the Northern uh, Warlords, and it's a more it's an actually a, a, a hand painted sort of canvas painting of a, a Mordian Iron Guard, but it's like a Mordian Iron Guard Steel Legion cross, so it's got the Mordian uniform, but like Steel Legion gas mask and gloves and boots, so it's really cool. Um, and that's really good because my two regiments are the Mordfus Rifles and the Armageddon 234th Mechanized. So I'm gonna, I've got that artwork and I'm gonna actually put that, I thought it'd be quite funny, put that in a, um, a frame that says like Employee of the Month or Guards of the Month and I'd have that mounted on the back of the door uh, of the room so it's like, because they've always got the gas mask on, it looks like it's a different Employee of the Month. It's meant to be a different Employee of the Month each time, but it's the same piece of work. I just thought that would be kind of cool. But yeah, so I've got a, like a, a painting of a Mordian iron guardsman that's going to go on uh, on the back of the door uh, and i've got the sword that's already mounted on the wall with the windows but i really wanted to do something with the the wall the big wall which hasn't got any windows and the one that's on the side of the door and what i've gone ahead and done guys and i've committed to this but the coming i couldn't find them in the uk so i had to order them from america so again they're going to take until the end of april to arrive is i've got 
some propaganda posters. And I've really themed it around sort of like, again, this being an Imperial command bunker. And I've got some slim frames and I've got some posters. Now the first poster that I got is just, a, it's a really, it's really well done, it's really nice. It's a, a large Inquisition eye. Like not eye as in eyeball, like the letter I with the skull in it and all that kind of stuff. So I've got that and it's it actually, it's very simple, but it's very effective. So it's a black eye and a white background. And I'm going to have that in a big frame. You've always got to have an Inquisition symbol somewhere. I wasn't sure about that one at first, but then when I um, when I sort of saw it and I thought about it and I looked about it and I imagined it on the wall and everything and visualized it on the wall, I thought, yeah, it's actually going to look really, really nice. And then, you know, big black eye with the skull in the middle, with, in a, with a white background in a black frame. That's going to look really good. They're all going to be these black, these slim line black frames. The second one that I've gone for is really cool. It's a picture of like a of a commissar, a bit like the old World War One Lord Kitchener propaganda that used to say, "I want you for the British Army," except for it says now, "I want you for the Imperial Guard." So that's going to be really cool. And I can't. I'm not. I'm, I'm not going to. I'll show you those when they're up. I don't want to give you any previews. I'm going to show you those when those are up. Now the last one that I went for, it's actually not a 40k piece of propaganda, but it was so perfect. And it was so 40k without being 40k that I had to go for. And it's the 1984 propaganda that says war is peace. Um, what was it? War is peace, ignorance is strength. And there's another one. I can't remember what it is. But basically it's it's very much a Warhammer 40k propaganda poster. But it's from 1984. So I'm going to have that up there as well. So I'm going to have these three propaganda posters on that big wall. And then I was talking about this with the console tables. Above the console tables... I'm going to have a flag. I'm going to have the regimental flag of the Mordian 50th Rifle. So this was actually suggested to me um, by one of my uh, Facebook people. The people that uh, one of the people posted this on the Mordian Facebook is from Redbubble, and it's a flag that says like "No pity, no mercy, no remorse." Mordian Iron Guard with like a Mordian, with a skull wearing a Mordian Iron Guard cap and some really cool stuff. So I'm going to have a flag mounted on another wall above where the armies are on display, above where, well, where the armies are being pre-recorded. And then I'm going to have the light shining down so the flag will be illuminated and the models will be illuminated. And that's really the, the next step. The theming of the room. We've got the, we've got the painting done, we've got the lighting done, we've got a lot of the practical elements done. But the neck outside of obviously the, the bookcases, the next step is going to be theming the room appropriately. So I'm going to get the propaganda posters up, I'm going to get the flag up, and I'm also going to get some of that text that I mentioned put around, like things like the light switches, like above the door. I might, I'm not going to go too crazy with the text, I'll probably just have it put above the light switch and in one or two other areas. Um, but the plan is, yeah, definitely to... Um, uh, to, to use the the like pictures and stuff like that to bring it back round this 50 50 of being a battle bunker and also being a professional youtube studio and so that's sort of the sort of the last major part of of the of the bunker and when that's done uh, the last thing, sort of last minor part will be, well I say minor, but these things are a way of turning out being the major part, is getting the really useful storage boxes and putting those everywhere. Now I did originally have a plan of using lots of like metal ammunition tins and everything um, to store things in, but I, decided, I, I re, re sort of went back on that idea simply because... Um, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be practical. I need to be able to see what's in each storage box. So... I may still incorporate those slightly, but I'm very much going cold on that. I want it to be very much a YouTube studio with theming. That's what I'm going for. And I, there's a very delicate balance in getting that right. Um, so I'm going to have the plastic storage, sort of see-through plastic storage bins. I'm going to get high quality ones. So I don't want anything that's crappy or cloudy or anything like that. They're going to be high quality. We we'll have to see the terrain. We we'll have to see models. So the reason I'm going for that is the YouTube studio is very much a practical place for recording, but it's also, like I've mentioned this before, an atmosphere. So you want to be, when I'm doing certain shots, you want to catch a glimpse of the armies 
that I want to display in the background. What again? I've been learning from other YouTubers. What do I? One of the things I love about Tabletop Tactics battle reports is they ha when they're recording someone, they have the the other armies in the background. You can be like, oh look, I can see the Adnek. Oh look, I can see the Imperial Guard or something. So I really like that, and so I'm going to have um, that in two ways. I'm going to have the um, armies on display in the bookcases, and then I'm going to have terrain on display in the. Uh, in the in the you really useful storage boxes so that's good I, I don't know if they're really if they're called that by the way that's just the term that someone said to me and now i've got it stuck into my head might be going off the totally wrong brand but they're basically plastic see-through boxes high density plastic really durable with like blue handles that like clip up so you can move them around you can get them all sorts of shapes and sizes so i'm going to get those for the terrain and when that's done the studio is basically done so yeah we'll have bookcases and display cases and it's gonna be really cool and it'll be a proper professional studio and hopefully it'll hit just in time if i look at the the way the um analytics on youtube are telling me i should hit that at pretty much the same time i'm expected to break ten thousand subs so it's going to be a real coming together of multiple paths you know ten thousand subs coming out of uk lockdown taking the youtube channel to the next level it's all gonna coalesce and converge at the same time now there's one last thing i want to talk about it's not directly related to the YouTube studio, but it's kind of about taking the channel to the next level. Um, but if you if you, if you were here for the studio stuff, you know, you, you can tune out now if you want to basically, but I'm gonna talk about how I'm gonna do a new format for, or how I'm gonna do my battle reports a bit better, hopefully. So one of the things that, uh, if, you, if, if you've seen the, the last few battle reports I did on the channel before lockdown and everything, I was very much in having to do a bit of few stop gaps, a few workarounds because, for example, I had the big um, table size and I had to basically section it off with like sci-fi DVDs to break it down to the smaller table size because when you're doing battle ports, you want to be on the cutting edge and you want to be doing it really on the table size that everyone's really playing at, especially with this channel, it's got a slight competitive slant to it. So I want to be doing it on a tournament size table. So good news is, is I have now got the proper sized battle mat. What I've gone out and done is I've gone and bought some of the Games Workshop battle mats. I know I sold out and got the Games Workshop ones, I know. They are cardboard, they're not, um, they're quite durable actually. I'm quite surprised at how durable they are. I've had a few test games and tested some battlefields out and stuff on them as well. So that's good. In fact, you can see them on the last battle report on the channel um, when I did the beginning battle report. That one um, is on the new games with Batman. So you can see they're good size. Um, I'm really concerned they might be a little, be a bit shiny with the new lighting system, but we'll have to see. But the good thing is, news flash is that um, we have the right battle size, battleground size now, which is great. Um, I will be looking at getting some neoprene appropriately sized battle uh, mats as well. But for now, we've got the Games Workshop ones. They're double sided, so I can do Earth, or, or I can do Concrete City, or I can do Mars Earth. So I've got everything covered, which is great. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is a bit interesting. I'm going, I'm going in a different direction, guys. I'm talking about terrain now. Now, currently in almost any battle report you see, there's essentially two or three types of terrain that you see. You see the Games Workshop stuff, which is great, but it's expensive. You've got to build it, you've got to paint it. Time is kind of at a premium at the moment. I don't want to spend any more time building and painting terrain when I've got tournaments that are upcoming. Yes, tournaments are back. Mm, I've got myself booked onto three of them. Can't wait. Um, but that means I've got a lot of Mordians you've, that I want to paint for now and then because I want to take all my plastic Mordians to tournaments because I don't want my metal ones to get chipped. So I've got to paint, 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 paint. Um, so I don't want to be spending all that time building and painting Games Workshop terrain, you know, when I want to be using my painting time painting models. The other th thing I could go for is MDF terrain. You can get that from eBay, you can get that from anywhere. A lot of terrain I currently have is MDF. And I already have a lot of great MDF terrain. So I thought, well, I've already got that and it's great and it does a great job, but the problem is that, again, if I was to get more of that, it takes a lot of time to build and paint it all. And it's actually quite expensive when you, you know, you're doing all the proper, I use a lot of texture paint on them and everything to make them really concrete. So they look really good, but again, time intensive and I've already got it essentially. But what I want to experiment with, guys, what I'm going to go down, you can get pre-painted resin terrain as well, but again, pre-painted is what we want to go for. I want pre-painted, but resin terrain, again, is, it's, it's kind of expensive. I'm okay with it though. I definitely something I consider if this experiment fails, but the experiment that I'm going with guys is going to be die cut terrain. 
Now, what the hell is Dagger? You've probably never heard of it. I stumbled across it. It's essentially, you know the old Necromunda terrain, the old cardboard stuff? You would have seen it in many of my battle reports, and if you've ever watched any of my brother's battle reports, he has his own channel, Scholar Progenium. If you've ever seen that, then um, you'll know the old Necromunda terrain. And it's great stuff. It's really vibrant and visual and detailed, and it's cardboard. So it's insane. And that terrain that, my, that we have, that me and my brother have, we've had it for over 20 years and it still looks great. It's a few frayed edges, but you don't actually don't notice them when you, obviously, when you put them together. So I thought, is anyone doing this cardboard terrain? But obviously 20 years on, the technology must have developed. And they are. There's a company called Battle Systems and I've gone and bought a boatload of their terrain. I probably could have contacted them and tried to do some like freebie stuff, but I believe in sort of buying the terrain, not getting this for free, so I can give an unbiased opinion. If someone gives me something for free, I feel like I have to give like a favorable review. So no, I've bought it and I've done it properly. So uh, we'll be doing some reviews on this, um, but it's really cool stuff. It's pre-painted it's cardboard you can put it together in seconds it's got these really cool little clips and it's like the necromunda terrain but we're talking 20 years later anyone who's seen that necromunda terrain you've seen the midwinter minis video where he talked about it and got his necromunda set out it's like that but it's way more durable i've already got a set in fact if you want to see some of this in action i've again did it on that beginner battle board, which is the last battle board on this channel and it's really cool. It's all pre-painted. It's highly, highly detailed. It's extremely varied. You can get anything from fantasy, like taverns and stuff like that, all the way up to like modern blown up cities, to gothic ruins, to completely futuristic sci-fi stuff. And it's all pre-painted and it gets put together really quickly. But what's really important is it's flat packable. You can disassemble it and reassemble it in a matter of moments. And that's going to be really important for the new terrain storage. And I've got to make the most out of that Warhammer. I've got to get everything out of the storage that I can. And it's going to be really cool. But more importantly is I think it looks fantastic. Now, I've not seen it used in too many battle reports. I don't think I've seen it used in any of the battle reports. Um, and there might be a good reason for that. It might be that it doesn't film well. But I'm going to go for it. And it seems extremely affordable, extremely easy to put together. You In every single kit, the, the owner's genuine as well. And uh, every single kit um, comes with loads of free scatter terrain. One of the big problems that my current boards have is they don't have a lot of scatter. There's lots of static buildings that are kind of self-contained. I want to have random crates. I want to have random bits of chairs and stuff and all that kind of stuff. It's all over the place, barricades, all this kind of stuff. And this terrain definitely lets me do that. So that's a very much... A, what you'll be seeing in the first, hopefully in the first proper battle report when we get the studio up and running. And I'm hoping it's going to be really, really cool. Um, in fact, I've got uh, two of the big um, sets from, from, uh, from Battle Systems now. And I'm really, really excited to, um, to unwrap them. I haven't had a chance to unwrap them yet, but to unwrap them and to go through them. I'm actually going to be doing a review of them. Uh, but I'm really excited because I got one of the smaller sets and it was really good. And I cannot wait to get some of the proper sets together and do enough to cover the whole board because I think it's going to be really cool. And it could be, it could be wrong. I could be, there could be a reason people aren't doing it at the moment, but I think it could be a bit of a revolution. I think it could be a bit of an evolution for 40k terrain. Don't have to buy the MDF stuff. You don't have to buy uh, the Games Workshop stuff. It's you, for the price of one or two Games Workshop pieces, you can get enough terrain to cover an entire current size 40k battlefield with scatter terrain and extra little bits. So I think it could be a really good way of shaking up the, the terrain systems that YouTubers use. And that's what I'm gonna go for. I could be totally wrong. It could be rubbish. It could be bollocks. It might not work, but I'm going to give it a go and I'm really excited for it. And I've already tried a little bit of it. And I think it works really, really well. I'm going to hopefully be doing some more videos about this uh, going forward. And what I really like about it, last thing to say, because this, this bit's gone on way too long. What I really like about it is that I think it will be really good for people who want to set up their own proper battlefields. One of the big problems that I see a lot of people having in their, in their basement battle sessions with their friends is they just don't have the terrain they can put together or a lot of the terrain is placeholder or unpainted and i think this i think it's really difficult when you're looking and i'm definitely going for tangent here guys but forgive me classic morning glory tangent i think it can be really difficult for players who see tabletop tactics battle reports see all the beautiful battle reports done by many other youtubers and they have beautiful terrain and it can be a bit difficult like a bit intimidating for new players thinking, oh i'll never get to that 
I genuinely think that this battle systems, die cut, cardboard terrain is going to make mean that you as a normal player can bring that you, that high level quality of terrain to your battlefield super quickly and super affordable. That's what I think. That's what I believe. I'm going to try it out. I could be wrong. We may look back in this video in six months time and laugh. Laugh. Oh, modern glory, you fool. We may do that and I'll have a laugh at my own expense. <laughs> anyway, that's it for now, guys. I hope you guys have enjoyed the sneak preview. I know I went off a bit of tangent at the end. Really hope you enjoyed it. If you like what I'm doing with this project, if you want to see me do more projects like this and take the YouTube channel to the next level, if you like this video and all the videos that I do, please consider heading on over to the Patreon page. It will be linked down in the description below. Um, I don't monetize any of my videos. All the money gets reinvested back into the channel and it allows me to do these awesome projects. L last final thing, once again, thank you to the Patreons. You guys are awesome. But without further ado, we'll end the video there. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave lots and lots of comments. Tell me what you're excited about. And of course, I'll see you guys next time.